Good morning, dear students of class 11 science. Welcome to environmental science class. We have finished two chapters in EVS, that is modes of existence, chapter number one, and chapter number two, ecology. So today we will begin with a new chapter which we have been learning since we were in junior classes, right? So the chapter that we are going to deal today is pollution. So what do you mean by pollution? Because all of us, we are very much aware regarding the pollution that is going around in our environment, right? So what do you mean by pollution? So when we define the term pollution, we can say that pollution is an undesirable changes in quality of soil right that's land air water or noise that means all over we have got an undesirable changes the changes which we do not want and those changes will generally in return will harm the health of human being and other living organisms so we can say that pollution is an undesirable changes in the quality of our air water soil or land and even noise which will affect the health of the living organisms like human being animals and even plants okay so now today we are going to begin with the first type of pollution that is called air pollution clear where the air will be polluted and those polluted air will not be healthy for the survival of living organism so let's Let's go with the definition of air pollution. Okay, so air pollution. I'll go to the first paragraph. Air pollution can be defined as the existence of toxic compounds. Toxic means harmful, poisonous. Clear? So it can define as the existence of toxic compounds in the atmosphere in concentration high enough and long enough to cause harm to the human, animal, and the earth's environment. So we can say that air pollution means the presence of those harmful toxic substances, okay, those harmful chemicals, which will remain in the environment for a longer period of time at a higher concentration, which will impact the health of the human being, the animals, and also that of the earth environment. Okay, so those pollutants, P O L L U T A N T S, pollutants means those agents which will pollute the air. Clear? So those agents, those pollutants which will pollute the air, it may be in solid form, it may be in liquid form, or in gaseous form. So the pollutants that will pollute the air can occur in three states solid, liquid, and gaseous state. Okay? So apart from being responsible for environment related diseases, it can cause phenomena such as acid rain, ozone depletion and photochemical smog. That means the air pollution will not only affect the health of the living organisms, it will not only hamper the health of the human being, but those air pollutions are also responsible for bringing the acid rain are also responsible for the depletion of ozone layer and are also responsible for the occurrence of photochemical smog. Clear? So let's go through the causes of air pollution. What are the different factors or what are the different causes of air pollution? So generally, air pollution occurs by both the natural phenomenon, the natural event, and by anthropogenic sources or by man-made sources. Okay, so we have got two causes or two sources of air pollution one will be natural which will occur in natural event like forest fire volcanic eruptions wind erosions okay pollen dispersal or natural radioactivity so these are the natural sources or the causes of air pollutions but in contrast to the natural phenomenon majority of the pollutants that will cause air pollution is mainly due to the human action the man-made actions okay so the major part of the pollution is not due to the natural phenomenon natural event but mainly due to the man's action so look at the figure the sources of emission of air pollution so industry you can see nearly 52 percent of the pollutants are being released into the air from the industry 
from transportation it's around 27 percent commercial and residential heating one percent from agricultural field 10 percent from other sources two percent consumer and commercial products eight percent so overall when we used to compare the pollutants released into the air that causes air pollution generally the pollutants that are emitted that are released from the anthropogenic sources or from the man-made sources are much more higher okay they are much more higher compared to the natural events so these are the mainly the causes of air pollutions so let's go through the other important causes of air pollutions fossil fuel so when we used to burn the fossil fuel like coal petroleum or any other thing they emit carbon monoxide and sulfur dioxide which causes air pollutions vehicle emissions from the vehicles there will be emissions there will be release of carbon dioxide and the oxide of nitrogen which will add to air pollutions chemicals which are used as pesticides to kill the pest in the agricultural field dust and other particulate matter and gases from the controlled burn power practices okay they are also responsible to bring the air pollutions clear then burning of coal in power industrial plants also releases many gases like carbon monoxide nitrogen oxides which will lead to air pollutions waste depositions in the landfills also generate methane and you know that methane is one of the greenhouse gases which causes air pollutions responsible for the global warming okay military reactions may cause pollutions by their use of nuclear or chemical warfare Okay, paint, hair spray, and aerosols contain ozone depleting organic compounds. Dust can be a major pollutant in places where there is little or no vegetation. Smoke and carbon monoxide may be emitted from wildfire. Methane is given off during the process of digestion in cattle. Radioactive gases are given off during radioactive decay in the earth crust. Volcanic activities produce sulfur, chlorine, as and other particular matter so these are the other factors which will add to the air pollutions clear so when we used to compare the different causes of air pollutions we can generally say that we have got the man-made sources and the natural sources so this forest fire volcanic er uh, volcanic eruptions okay then wind erosion erosions pollen dispersals natural radioactivity these are all the natural phenomena which will release the pollutants into the air that brings air pollutions but this burning of fossil fuel vehicle emissions okay use of chemicals then burning of coal waste depletion landfills paint hairspray and aerosols using okay military actions dust all these phenomena are the man-made sources and generally man-made sources are the one that used to give a major for a major part of the pollutants in the air which brings air pollutions clear so let's go to the next one greenhouse gases or the greenhouse effect okay so greenhouse effect the natural process by which the atmosphere traps some of the sun's energy having the effect of warming up the earth so all of you are very much aware regarding the greenhouse gases greenhouse effect and the global warming which we are going to discuss now clear so generally what I mean is that all of us know that the sun ray right the solar energy used to fall on our earth or on our ecosystem and generally the plant used to trap few of them for the process of photosynthesis but the plant does not absorb or does not utilize all the solar energy entering the earth surface entering our ecosystems so majority of those solar energy needs to be reflected back to the source from where they are entering the earth but during this greenhouse effect what I mean is that we have got few greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide we have got methane gas nitrous oxide chlorofluorocarbon right they used to trap those outgoing solar energy or solar radiations let's be very carefully they used to trap those outgoing solar radiations as a result those reflected solar energy are not allowed to leave the earth's surface they are being trapped in our earth's atmosphere by the greenhouse gases and when they are being trapped by the greenhouse gases generally the earth's temperature keeps on increasing and this phenomenon is known as greenhouse effect and when the earth's temperature keeps on increasing then it will lead to a phenomenon known as global warming right this basic idea all of you know all of you have known this one right so 
the radiations from the sun with the frequencies of visible light having sort of wavelength pass through the earth atmosphere and heat up the surface of the earth generally the solar energy will fall on the surface of the earth and the earth atmosphere will keep on increasing but as i have told you that all the solar energy are not being trapped half of them has to be reflected back so these radiations are reflected back into the atmosphere as infrared radiation clear so those radiations which needs to be reflected back into the atmosphere okay from the earth atmosphere they are reflected back in the form of infrared radiation which are lower frequency and longer wavelength the greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide water vapor methane absorbs those infrared radiation and re-radiate back into the surface of the earth or the lower atmosphere the effect of the entire process is that the heat is retained by the earth and there is a resultant rise in the temperature generally this reflected radiation or the solar energy needs to leave the earth's surface or the earth's atmosphere but due to the presence of the greenhouse gases those reflected radiated radiation okay or the solar energy they are not allowed to leave the earth atmosphere clear so the greenhouse gases will absorb those infrared radiations and when those radiations are being re absorbed or being re radiated back into the earth's surface the temperature of the earth slowly keeps on increasing clear so let's go through the human sources of greenhouse gases and you know that phenomenon is called the greenhouse effect also now let's go to the human sources of greenhouse gases so first one is carbon dioxide remember the different types of greenhouse gases i am telling you one is carbon dioxide two is methane nitrous oxide chlorofluorocarbon and then ozone these are the different types of greenhouse gases that will contribute to the greenhouse effect okay so carbon dioxide the first greenhouse gases is produced by the burning of fossil fuels like coal natural gas okay or the petroleum oil etc so when they are burned then 80 percent of carbon dioxide are released from them clear so whenever we used to burn the fossil fuel it percent of carbon dioxide are being released into the atmosphere so activities like deforestation all right that means cutting down of tree ranching and agricultural are also responsible for increase in the amount of carbon dioxide present in the air but most probably burning of fossil fuel will also add to the contribution of pollutants that will cause air pollution number two methane which very important greenhouse gases which added to the atmosphere due to human activities it is produced by the rice cultivation cattle and sheep ranching and decaying of materials in the land fields other sources it can be due to the human activities including coal mining oil drilling and leaking gas pipe okay so human beings are responsible for 145 percent more of methane then what will be present under natural condition that means we are contributing highest or the higher percentage of methane gas in the atmosphere which is mainly the important greenhouse gases third one is nitrous oxide okay generally it's 15 percent above the naturally present and this is because of various industrial and agricultural practices that means the level of this nitrous oxide is also increasing due to the activity of the human being cfc all of you heard this one cfc right chlorofluorocarbon which are used as in cooling agent in the refrigerators but you know are very much aware that cfc causes ozone depletion now use of cfc has been banned okay we are no longer using cfc as in coolant in refrigerators but other cfc are not being used okay other fluorocarbons are being used as a substitute for cfc but the thing is that though it will not deplete the ozone layer it will not cause damage to the ozone layer but it's also one of the greenhouse gases the next one is ozone it's also an important greenhouse gases o3 remember ozone means o3 it's also an ozone uh, sorry it's also greenhouse gases it is produced both naturally and also because of industrial activities 
Now, since the gas is unstable and it is short-lived in the atmosphere, the extent of damage it causes has not been uh, certain. So, we have just gone through the human sources of greenhouse gases. Now, let's talk with the effect of greenhouse gases. What are the different effects of greenhouse gases? Uh, gases? Mainly, it causes global warming. Why? Because it will not allow the outgoing infrared radiation to leave the earth atmosphere it will trap those infrared radiations as a result the temperature of the earth keeps on increasing and will lead to a phenomenon known as global warming so greenhouse gases causes global warming the effects of global warming are many number one temperature of sea water will rise leading to the thermal expansion of water causing the sea level to rise the glaciers will melt and it will lead to the further rise in the water level the rising sea level causes coastal area flooding and the threat to loss of life and property during coastal storms in the low-lying area simply so when the earth temperature keeps on increasing due to the global warming the level of water in the oceans in the sea also increases why because the glacier will start melting whenever the glaciers are melting the water level will increase and this rise in the water level will pose a serious threat to the life of human being not only of human being but that too of many other animals it brings soil erosions it will flood to the people living in the coastal areas clear number two effect Warmer sea surface temperatures will give rise to stronger tropical storms causing damage to property and the loss of life. This is the third, so this is the second effect of global warming. Next one. Higher land temperature will result in more rainfall throughout the world. However, at the regional level, the rainfall pattern may undergo changes. So due to global warming, the pattern of rainfall will also change. Some places where the only marginal farming was possible might get transformed to bread basket of the area, whereas in other areas the reverse might happen. The timing of the wet and dry period may change drastically and the storms could become more powerful and damaging. So we can say that the global warming will bring a change in the climatic pattern of a place. Clear? It will change the rainfall in a particular habitat or in a particular place. Next one, the higher amount of carbon dioxide will mean faster growth of crops but will be accompanied with, equal, with equally fast growth of weeds. So third one is that though there will be higher amount of carbon dioxide and the higher amount of carbon dioxide will increase the growth of the crops but at the same time there will be increase in the growth of unwanted wheat also so these are the this is the fourth effect of greenhouse gases clear next one next effect there would be loss of biodiversity as the plants and animals would find a difficulty to adapt to the changing climatic conditions and will migrate to cooler places so overall it will impact the biodiversity the diversity of species okay so global warming will lead to the loss of biodiversity next one the higher temperature will result in faster evaporation leading to draw or uh, draft there would be a rise in food price which will increase the number of undernourishment around the world the high temperature will encourage the growth of digging carriage germs climate related deaths are likely to double in the next 25 years so these are the different effects of global warming in our ecosystem in the life of human being and that of the other animals okay so the greenhouse gases or the effect is increasing at an accelerated rate it's increasing day by day okay if the vast tundra is melting is releasing an enormous amount of carbon dioxide and methane okay this is further increasing greenhouse effect also the rise in the temperature means the sea absorbs less of the carbon dioxide Okay, and this will further increase the greenhouse effect. So history tells us that Earth's climatic remains stable for many thousands of years. Thereafter, a radical changes may occur, spelling. Okay, radical may occur. 
spelling disasters for the present populations. So though for thousands of years it will remain in stable conditions, there will be no change. But after that, the temperature will keep on changing, and those changing temperature will pose a serious threat to the life of the human being. If you do not take the actions right at the right time in the right moment, okay, we are not going to make any effort to reduce the climatic changes due to the man's activity on the priority, then we may be too late to prevent the impending disasters. Yeah, so we must be aware regarding the changes in our climatic conditions, regarding the emissions of harmful greenhouse gases, and we have to take the relative measures to control the emission of those gases and mainly we the human beings are the one who are contributing mostly to the rise in the temperature of our ecosystem rise in the phenomenon of global warming or the greenhouse effect so we must be aware and we must take an immediate actions to control the emission of those harmful greenhouse gases so this was for today's class in the next class we'll begin with the need for pollution control and prevention and control of pollution so, okay so this was for today see you in next class the third chapter pollution so thank you